Hello, I'm Tom Selby, AJ Bell's Senior Analyst, and with me here today is Alex Crook, Manager of the Bankers Investment Trust, which is run by fund management giant Henderson Global Investors. We're going to talk you through how Bankers works and what it seeks to achieve for its shareholders, so you can decide whether it's potentially a suitable portfolio pick for you or not, as the case may be. Alex, thanks very much for joining me today. Um, could we kick off by looking at the Bankers Investment Trust mandate? So. Does it look to target capital growth or income or is it a little bit of both? It's really the latter. It is a bit of both. So okay. we've got targets to try and grow the capital above both the FTSE All Share, so trying to beat the UK market, uh, because essentially we're taking some of those assets and going investing overseas. So we better produce a better return than the UK. We also benchmark ourselves against other global investment markets in America and Japan, etc. But really, also we're trying to do is grow the income. And again, we have an income target there to grow uh, dividends annually above the rate of inflation. So it sits in the global category. Um, I guess that's a clue, a clue for us as to where you invest. Could you just talk us through exactly where you invest and why you do that? Yeah, our mandate is, is to invest in every market around the world. We can be in, in America, Japan, Europe, uh, wherever we see opportunities. Being a, a listed company, we have opportunities with our scale to actually invest in, in markets like domestically in China and India as well, so we can own licenses there. And really, essentially, we're looking for our investments to support our mandate. So we're looking for investments that will grow their value over time, but equally will pay us dividends that we can pass on to our shareholders and hopefully grow those dividends over time. Yeah. And what kind of type of stocks are you looking for in the fund? I mean, are we looking at value stocks? Are we looking at growth stocks, uh, momentum stocks, growth at reasonable price? yield at reasonable price. I mean, what, what specifically is it that we're looking at here? Yes, lots of, lots of different, <laughs> different ways of investing there. Yeah. Essentially, I think you can get down to that the bankers is about value investing. Okay. So, so the way I see it is, is trying not to overpay for an asset. Uh, I'm looking, therefore, uh, at the value of each investment and the opportunity, the investment returns I'm expecting, uh, and making sure that if it's expensive relative to the returns it's generating, we'll probably pass on it and look for a different investment. Mm. Uh, and across an economic cycle, so as you move from boom to bust, where that value lies in, in both markets and sort of sectors and stocks can vary. So again, if we look currently in America, we're probably more looking at, at growth at a reasonable price, so looking for growth equities, but not overpaying. But then in Europe, which is still struggling with its uh, recovery, we find much more deeper value opportunities where the market is just not giving that company credit, so more value orientated in that market. Yeah. Now, if we look at a more technical side of investment trusts, um, they can trade at a premium or a discount to the asset value or the underlying value of the portfolio. Um, can you just talk us through what bankers' historic positions, positions have been on that and how you look to manage it? Yeah, certainly. Essentially, because investment trusts are listed on a stock market, the value of those shares traded on the market can vary uh, relative to the underlying assets that, that are in the trust. Uh, and bankers has, has varied between a sort of small premium and around about a 7 to 10% discount over the last, say, five years. Um, the board does can buy back shares, so when the board decide that that value, that discount is too wide relative to, to our peers, uh, then we can and do buy shares back to try and uh, reduce that discount. But essentially, that's been the trading, the, the trading range over time. And investors will hear the term gearing quite a lot in relation to investment trusts. So can you just talk us through exactly what gearing is, um, how the Bankers Investment Trust uses gearing, um, and what investors can do to research and think about whether that's important to them. Yes, yeah, certainly. Again, gearing is essentially where a trust can borrow some money from either investors through loans or yeah. debentures, or it can borrow it from a bank. Uh, and it's one of the key advantages, I think, of investment trusts relative to open-ended um, funds is the ability to borrow money at the right point in the cycle when maybe shares are cheap and you can increase returns to investors. Um, my, my key there, I think, is one, uh, is the cost of borrowing that the trust has uh, a good value? So has it got old debentures which maybe have a very high interest cost, or has it been replacing that with much lower borrowing costs more recent times? So look at the average cost of, of that gearing. Uh, also, again, the average term, so how long is the trust borrowing it? So if bankers last year, we, we took out a 20-year uh, loan effectively from some investors at 3.65%. Okay. So that's actually lower than the income we get off our investments today. So over 20 years, 
um, should support some value. And then finally, look at whether the trust has a, a maximum gearing. Does it say to investors, when the gearing gets too large, we will, we will reduce that level, and therefore reduce the risk and volatility of the investments? Again, bankers has a cap at 20%, uh, and so won't let the gearing go above that level. Bankers has got a phenomenal track record of dividend growth. I think we're looking at 49 years and counting now. How has it managed to achieve this? And can you explain how you can use reserves to try and ensure that that record is maintained in the future? Yes, yeah, so every year since 1966, actually, Bankers has increased the dividend to its investors, which is the second longest uh, record in the market. And, and essentially, it comes from two things. One is the style of investment. So we do look for investments that we own, the company shares we own, to grow their dividends. And as I said earlier, if those dividends grow, I can pass them on to our shareholders and grow the income over time. So it's part and parcel of our style uh, of investing. But secondly is revenue reserves. Again, as you mentioned, this is a great advantage of investment trust that in the good years, when income is very high maybe, dividends are high, we can save a little bit back into reserves and in the more difficult years when dividend growth is low, we can feed that back out. So again, this ability to sort of smooth dividends across cycles is, is great advantage for investment trust. Uh, and Bankers has nearly two years of clean rev revenue reserves equal to twice the annual dividend. So again, that gives us the ability uh, to either select stocks from low yielding markets at certain times when they're cheap, but also to pay out those dividends uh, when dividend growth is more moderate. Yeah, I'll have to ask you about the Brexit vote. I know it's something that everyone's been talking about for quite a period of time now. Um, so can you talk us through how you positioned the fund in the build-up to the referendum result and how it's performed in light of that result? Yeah, we, we started maybe a year ago, obviously knowing that a vote was coming, um, and, and really reduced actually a lot of our exposure to UK domestic names. I, I don't think I had any great view of whether it would go one way or the other, uh, but to me there was a risk and an event risk uh, within that vote. And so what we did is reduce the UK exposure, reduce the exposure to sterling as well in particular, uh, and then re increase the level of cash maybe to allow us to take some advantages of that vote. And we have been reinvesting in markets post that Brexit. Markets fell. Uh, there were some opportunities in that, that period which we used to invest some of the cash. Uh, really the key now is the medium term growth outlook really does does this event just focus on the UK is it a wider event for Europe or the world uh, and really what opportunities come about from there Alex Crook thank you very much for your time today thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time